And we're here with Steve Oren. He's Chief Technologist with Intel Federal. And Steve, welcome to the program. Thank you, Abe. Glad to be here. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, of course, we are right in the middle of TIA's Data Center Workshop uh, toward the end of the year here in 2016. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about, and I know you either gave a keynote during the workshop you're about to. About to, yes. Um, talking about security challenges in the data center, but really segmenting that conversation between three primary areas, physical, digital, or cyber, and insider threats. Let's start with physical. So some of the challenges when dealing with uh, data center security from a physical perspective, um, it's about, it comes down to a couple key things. Number one is access control, and that's just sort of known for a long time. You want to have good access control on the, uh, the doors to the data center, access control for admins that are going to administer those systems, um, and also have good supply chain control on where those systems are at any given time. From an, uh, a data center security overall plan, um, when it comes to the physical, there's really sort of two kinds of threats you're dealing with. It's theft of equipment and systems, which could lead to data theft, um, and then denial of service, uh, taking out the network, taking out the services that the data center is supplying, and so you want to be able to protect against both of those, but at the same time have mitigation plans in place for when something does go wrong, because eventually it will. Um, the same is also somewhat true on the cyber side, uh, whether it be an, a, a, a denial of service attack coming from an adversary or a malware that uh, goes rampant or APT that's been found on the systems. Ultimately, it's the same kind of problem space, which is either data exfiltration and data theft or denial of service. And so the plans that get put in place or need to be put in place for these organizations really need to cover both physical and digital and address both of those kinds of threats, um, as well as the mitigation. The interesting thing about the insider is that they could be doing either one of those kind of attacks, either denial of service or a, uh, a, a theft of information. They could be coming from the inside uh, digitally or physically accessing it. And the challenge really is, is they have legitimate access to at least parts of the infrastructure. They're an insider. They already are allowed in. They have a key card. They have an account on the systems. And so you've got uh, what, what a lot of organizations are looking to try to do is how do we apply the security controls that were originally really designed to keep the bad guys out? How do we keep them, how do we keep the insiders uh, and the good guys from going bad or the good guys from doing bad? Um, and so the focus area that a lot of data centers and, organization, and organizations managing either their own or other people's data centers are looking at it across those three domains. Now, uh, one of the questions I wanted to ask you was, you know, what changes or improvements are, you know, enterprises, companies, uh, carriers, any really, any uh, private enterprise making in order to um, thwart these types of threats? But I sort of want to change my question based on what you just said. So how do you address like a Snowden character? What do you? Uh, what measures can you take to prevent that from happening? So there are a couple. There are a couple different things you would want to do. Um, when it comes to at legitimate access to systems, you want to have an, in place a couple of different things. One, a, a need to know kind of approach. Uh, so people can have access to the things that are necessary for their job. But if you go in and, and put in data use controls and access controls that are tiered, so that. Uh, no single individual has information or access to information that isn't necessary to job without some approval. Um, I know that some folks in the government have talked about this idea of a two-man rule, um, which is akin back to the old days of launching missiles, being having two people in charge of flipping the key. So having a two-man rule in place for critical data controls. It, what's important is that you've got to apply it where it makes sense, because having two people involved in every decision can get in the way of efficiency. But for critical systems like turning on and off access controls or giving new account privileges, those kind of things, it makes sense to do a two-man rule. The other thing that I think uh, a lot of organizations have seen success with is the bridging of the physical and digital. So being able to track when people log into the environment to did they badge into the building. And so one simple t uh, uh, best practice is to connect the badging systems to the access control systems and then apply your threat analytics to see both be, uh, domains of information. This way, you know, if you've got an account that's logging in from, say, uh, somewhere in Chicago, but the person badged in in Texas, that immediately can set up a red flag. And so you can track their physical world with their digital, uh, their digital work. And so bridging those two worlds has gone a long way to helping make sure that only the right people get access to the information they need and then building in that tiering structure of certain data can be only seen by certain people and any changes to those accesses from tier one to tier to three requires multiple parties to make, to make that decision. What that will do, it won't eliminate an insider because a dedicated insider is going to get something. They have legitimate access, but it will limit the scope of the damage that they can do. 
And then the last thing you want to do is have mitigation plans. Assume you're going to get uh, compromised by both insiders and external folks. Have a remedia remediation plan, incident response. And one best practice that I will talk about later today uh, that not enough companies are doing is work aiming. So not only do you want to assume and have a plan, but test the plan. Have someone go through a process of shutting down a system or walking out of the office with a, uh, a key piece of equipment. Implement the plan and see how effective it is. See if you're able to figure out what went wrong and get up back up and running within a, a period of time that's uh, important for your SLA. Wargaming is probably one of the best ways to really understand how good your practices are, how good your mitigations and response plans are. And it's where, once you've done that, the analysis, the postmortem that you do on the war game is how you improve um, from real world scenario. And some of the larger organizations out there have built both um, real world war gaming, so with people and teams that get applied, but they also do things like what Netflix did in open source, which is Chaos Monkey, which is a set of tools that will randomly shut stuff down in the data center to test the plans on an ongoing basis, not in a, well, we're all going to war game today kind of scenario, but any time, any day, any time of day, 3 a.m. on a weekend, 2 o'clock in the afternoon before market close, those kind of things, they, uh, the, the chaos motion will, will either turn off services, take things offline, make changes to the network. And so being able to see if your plans can deal with real world scenarios um, in a controlled environment is one of the best practices. And we've seen a lot of companies adopt the uh, technologies and tools that Netflix open sourced into uh, what's called the Simeon Army, um, instead of tools for testing the resiliency of your infrastructure. Of course, Intel Federal is dealing with a number of uh, public sector agencies, uh, educating them and, and such. Uh, what's the, what's the, uh, I guess the number one uh, concern by these federal agencies as far regarding uh, these challenges in security right now? So I think it comes into really three camps. Um, one challenge that you hear often is uh, supply chain. How do we protect the supply chain? How do we know what, where the, both the hardware and software that they're being brought into the organization or into the data center, where is it coming from? And then once it's here, how do we track it through its life cycle? And so I think supply chain is something that they talk a lot about, mm -hmm. um, and they're looking for good solutions. Um, and it's everything from being able to know the supply chain from a contractual perspective, where you're getting your parts mm -hmm. and software components, being able to vet them on acquisition, and then being able to track them throughout their life cycle. Um, and one of the things we've been working with a lot of companies is around sort of private and hybrid and public cloud implementations of being able to get that level of trust into the physical system and then apply those security controls to where the workloads and data get provisioned so that you can marry the digital and physical world uh, using a hardware route of trust. The second area uh, is really around access control. I think that's probably the big thing. If you look at the past couple of years around data breaches, one of the key starting points for a lot of them was somebody's credential got compromised, someone got phished. And so imp the implementation of multi-factor authentication, which is sort of what you know, what you have, what you are as part of an authentication uh, for all employees and especially for admins and uh, users with elevated privileges. Mm -hmm. And then the last piece of the puzzle really comes down to, and whether you it's about protecting the data. And that's the thing that I think is the big fundamental shift over the last couple of years. We're going from, I need to create perimeters around my data center to understanding that those perimeters are somewhat fluid now. So let's protect the data. And that's data encryption. And that's being able to do data encryption throughout its life cycle. That's a lot of good information. Uh, good luck on your keynote, by the way, coming up at TIA's data center workshop. And thanks for talking to us. My pleasure. Thank you, Abe. Thank you.